So now that uh, we've got the Cat 5 on the uh, wall surface and it's nice and uniformly applied and opaque, we now need to detail our window. I've got uh, a window I borrowed from the BCIT lab uh, donated by Cascadia. A uh, nice uh, high quality fiberglass uh, frame. Uh, looks like it's a triple pane window. Very nice. Uh, actually, it's a double pane. Um, the considerations for installing the window is you want to make sure, obviously, that it's level. You want to make sure that it's plumb with the wall surface so that you have an even uh, exposure. And you want to uh, decide on what your setback within the rough opening is going to be to correspond to whatever your trim details are going to be. So in BC, we have to obviously have a rain screen assembly. Um, the code allows for anything from 3 8 up to 3 quarters. Uh, I'm a firm believer that 3 quarters is the appropriate thickness. Uh, 3 8 doesn't, in my view, allow for enough uh, air movement. And you can also get uh, bridging between the supports if you have uh, fairly flexible uh, siding, which kind of defeats the purpose of a capillary break. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to be using uh, 3 quarter inch uh, furring strips, uh, pressure treated plywood uh, for both this uh, mock-up as well as my owner built house. Um, so we're going to have 3 quarter inches uh, on top of that. So you have to think about what the details are going to be between your siding, whatever cladding you're going to have, your trim work and your window. Um, a lot of people in this area are using something called um, hardy board. It's a cementitious uh, board. Um, if you've got uh, two pieces uh, furring, we'll try to hold this up, and you've got your, your hardy coming in, it's going to be sitting at, at the same elevation or the same exposure as your trim. If you put your trim on the same thickness of furring strip as you're putting your hardy. So one trick is to double up the furring strips around the opening that the trim has been applied to. And what you end up with, if I can hold this all together, is you then end up with a pocket behind the trim that the siding can slip into. If you have a thicker siding, build the trim out even more. Uh, but this allows for there to be a hidden seam so you don't have the nails showing. Uh, let's say you're using hardy panel, which is my, what my neighbor's doing, and it would allow you to hide those fasteners. Uh, it uh, provides protection for that interface because now that interface is somewhere halfway through the trim board. Um, and it just makes for a nice, uh, uh, a nice clean look. You don't have to worry about caulking between the trim and the siding. You don't have that three-quarter inch gap. The, the, the seam that would be underneath this board would be well protected and uh, doesn't uh, have to be caulked. But then you have an issue of how are you going to detail the trim to where your window is. I, uh, I like the concept of uh, flangeless windows where you can put them anywhere in the, uh, the wall assembly, the, the thickness. Uh, I plan on having a, a very high efficiency wall assembly. It might be up to 13 inches thick. I want to be able to choose where that window plane is in terms of where my insulation plane is so that they're somewhat continuous. Uh, so that'll dictate where in the assembly the window will be mounted. Then you have to take into consideration how are you going to join the trim piece with the windows? So for the purposes of this mock-up, we're simulating just a standard 2x4 wall, old, old code, uh, with insulation uh, between the, uh, the studs. So we don't have exterior insulation that we're going to worry about for this mock-up. So then the question is, what, uh, what uh, exposure are you going to put the window in the rough opening so that it ties in with a logical piece of lumber that you can put in between the trim and the window so that you're not having to cut something down. So I've, so I've got say, a 1x2 here 
uh, that uh, I'm using to get an idea of uh, a return back to the window. Um, I can see that uh, that's going to be too small, so maybe a 1 by 3 And what you would then do is you would mount the window in the opening so that a standard 1 by 3 would have a 3 inch, a 3 eighths inch gap to allow for a caught joint between the back side of the return and the window glass or the window frame, uh, the window frame. Uh, and now you have a nice, neat, hidden look. You can. Uh, that the uh, instructor at BCIT, James, uh, he uh, was talking about this. You can extend your trim board past your return so that the uh, return almost becomes hidden. Then you have a nice neat uh, finish around the window and you don't see any of the cock joints. You never want to uh, have your return flush with the outside edge of the trim. That's going to look uh, a little bit tacky. Uh, you can't necessarily get them to line up all the way if they're slightly warped. So you either want a slightly uh, uh, um, stuck out uh, sort of rebate or uh, extension, um, or you want to bring it back in from the edge. Either way, you have a nice look. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, detail some of this up and figure out what we need for uh, a, a trim return and uh, what uh, profile we're going to install the window and start getting this done. Okay, thanks.